Greetings! My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome to Crimson Grey, a game of, about a severely depressed boy, um, young man who meets a interesting girl. Because, as we all know, Relationships involving two completely sane and healthy individuals are for grommets! Ah. Let's get right in, shall we? John had always thought of himself as a stable person. John, you see, was what you call an other kin. He believed himself to be a horse. Stability worked out well when he was just trying not to let the little things get him down. It wasn't so great when everything was crumbling around him. When the entire world started seeming grey and flat, then he began wondering if all that stability would kill him, and if he would care when it did. There weren't any highs or lows anymore. Whatever happened to him, John didn't feel happy or sad. He just... Hey hey, what are you doing spacing out, man? You're a real head case these days, John. You gonna float away on us? Sorry, just distracted. A moment later, he started drifting away again. Even his friends' voices were nothing but buzzing in his ears. Meaningless sounds echoing in his hollow shell. <sighs> they weren't even really his friends. They were friends with the happy-go-lucky person he'd been at the beginning of high school. These days, they joked about him being no fun, but it was more than a joke. They'd get tired of him, find someone else, and then he'd be alone. Well, you never know. Some people like being around someone who, who, sounds, who appears to all the world to be dead inside. I mean, that's how I've made all my friends. <laughs> He wasn't sure whether or not that would be worse. Whoa, is that creepy chick staring at us? I think she is. Who is that anyway? Lizzie Doss, I, I think. Short for lizard. In our year, right? John, doesn't she have math with you or something? It took John a second to even register the question. They were staring at some girl who was staring back at them. She looked the same as all the other girls in the, at their school. Yes. For you see, this is taking place in that one Twilight Zone episode. I can't remember the name. Shire, maybe. She could probably hear them talking about her. He wanted to say something, but kept silent. Damn, she is really staring. Is she staring at us or John? I think it's him. <laughs> you think she's a stalker? Nah, don't be ridiculous. Yeah, those are some crazy eyes, huh? -huh. You better watch out, John. I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to give them different voices, but I think they're sort of melding into one. Which, now that I think about it, is probably a metaphor for something. You're a real sad sack these days, but you can do better than her. Look at those eyes. Dead eyes. Look at those black dead eyes. I think we match. Shut up. The words were past his lips before he could stop them. Why did he have to open his mouth now of all times? But he couldn't let them keep talking about her like that. People called him creepy or crazy all the time, and he hated it. But after those two words, he just stood there like an idiot. Even when something mattered to him, he couldn't pull himself together. What's wrong with you, man? Don't say, don't say things like that about people you don't know. She's just hanging out up here like we are. Uh, no, she's giving us some serious crazy eyes. <laughs> she's just staring. What are you talking about? Just leave her alone, okay? She hasn't done anything to you. Sheesh. Okay, man. Think she's gonna fall in love with you as her handsome protector or something? 
Heh, <laughs> that would be just like John. Do you even know what would be anything like John? If you want to talk to the crazy girl, be our guest. We're heading back to class. Don't wait up, man. The way her eyes moved. John thought that she was focused on him so intensely that she might not have even heard what the others said. Did it even bother her? He wished he could be like that, instead of the smallest things sending him crashing into a state of worthlessness. But maybe she was like him, just capable of hiding it. John cleared his throat and walked up to check on her. Hey, sorry about them. They can be assholes sometimes. Um, well, I guess I don't have a lot to say. Sorry if we bothered you. John slunk away and cursed his own idiocy. She had been fine without him. He just made everything worse. I don't know about that. Did you see that deer in the headlights look? I think she was... Uh, I think she was just... <laughs> surprised that you came over to talk to her. And didn't, and didn't know what to say. <laughs> like I said, you match. There had been something hard in her eyes, a strength he didn't have. He had probably been projecting all his weakness onto her in the first place. She wasn't like him, wasn't broken. <laughs> Are you sure about that? She could shrug off the things his friends had said and get on with her life. Maybe. At least that meant she could shrug off his annoyance too. She'd probably just forget all about him. Thank you. You're so kind. Such a kind person. The kindest person. The only person. The, you are the only one. On my touchtone, touchtone telephone. I found you. I finally found you. I found you. I found you. You found you. Found you. Found you. Found you. 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 The teacher's voice was incomprehensible. Well, I guess we're just gonna move right past that. John was most likely out of earshot before she did that. I'm, nah, but even if he was, I, that's perfectly ordinary behavior, and he would have no reason to think otherwise. But John knew he must be picking it up on some level. He wasn't sure how, but even though he stumbled through every day, he was doing okay at school. He could seem normal whenever he wanted to, it just didn't feel worth it. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, um, maybe I don't. But I know something that would be that could be described in the same words, I suppose. That was almost the worst part. He seemed normal, even though nothing was normal anymore. It wouldn't ever be normal again. Well, depends on how you define normal. Perhaps the worst part is that this w that this is your normal. Eh, uh, or perhaps this is the usual bizarre, so to speak. What did Mrs. Smith say? Or is that Smythe? What did Mrs. Smythe say? High-functioning depression. Such an awful, empty phrase. <laughs> At least class was over now. He could go home, sleepwalk through the assignment, and then fall unconscious. At least for a, f a few hours he could... Yeah, at least if you were in depression, uh, such depression that you could barely function, at least then people might be driven to take care of you. Or at the very least, something would change, something would be different, instead of the usual bizarre. It's like sensory deprivation. You'll be wanting to, you'll be wanting to tear yourself into shreds, just to feel something. Then he became aware of her. She was watching him. Not that I would know. I'm just very good at empathizing with people like that, to the point where I can... Well, never mind. Maybe she wanted to thank him. No, he was being stupid. He'd done nothing with thanking. 
I mean, he had got the... And those ties to, bu uh, to buzz off. It more likely she wanted something from him. Or, most likely of all, maybe she didn't care about him, and he was imagining the whole thing. Oh, me. She was still staring, though. Uh, yeah. You know, Her ex expression was impossible to read. Was she shy? Was she embarrassed for him? Either way, he doubted it mattered. He needed to get to his appointment anyway. He didn't want M Mrs. Smythe getting mad at him again. Mrs. Smythe was one of the only people John could focus on. He wasn't sure how much good she actually did him aside from prescribing medicine, but at least she tried to help. Eh, well, sometimes that can be worse than nothing. John, you're not looking so bad today. Did something good happen? A boy your age ought to be more interested in girls. Are you dating someone? Well, I smiled at a girl in the, hall in the hallway, so she's probably pregnant by now. No, I can't focus on people. Hmm, can't you? You, were fo uh, you seem to be focusing on that girl. But perhaps it's just because she was focusing on you. Maybe it's just that you can't focus on the people around you because they've given you nothing to focus on. Perhaps. But I'm no psychoanalyst. Hmm. Maybe I could prescribe you something for that. We don't have any on hand now, but I could get it quickly. That's an advantage of having Koitek in town. <laughs> yeah. That's the tro- oh, that's somewhat of a troubling issue with some, uh, psychiatrists or psychologists. I forget which is which. Sometimes they can be a bit too eager to use the drugs and such. It's not- it's not always, like, a bad thing. It's not- it's- I mean, some of them are probably just- probably influenced by, uh, partnerships they've had- they have with pharmaceutical companies. They can sometimes push drugs on you, that even though other drugs would probably be more effective. But oftentimes it's just because it's in their mind, you know? <laughs> it's what they- it's what comes to mind immediately. It's not, um, it's usually not malicious. Or even- or even apathetic. It's just the way minds work, you know? Not that I would know, I've never gone to it. <laughs> Psychologist or psychiatrist or anything like that. But, well, I know quite a bit more about things that I've never had personal experiences with than most people. I don't want to take this medicine anymore. I don't think it's working. The Paxatine? That's the first one you've really responded to. I feel worse. Everything is so grave. Voices just echo. And I go back to a generic medicine. John, you need to understand that you are deeply clinically depressed. It's my professional opinion that you should under no conditions go off your medication. But he's not wanting to go off his medication. He's just wanting different medication. He's telling you that it's not working. <sighs> like I said, some of them are motivated by partnerships with certain pharmaceutical companies. That was not a word. Pharmaceutical companies. That, <laughs> I don't know what I said. Uh, and that can easily create motivated thinking. Ah, eh, well. This is why you should get second, second opinions. Especially when it comes to psychiatrists. I mean... And psych when it comes to psychology, rather. Uh, people get second opinions all the time when, they're, when it comes to physical health. And yet, when it comes to psychology, they're just so... It, it can be very much... Well, anyways. <laughs> when you're getting used to a medication, there can be some initial side effects. Sometimes things have to get worse before they can get better, okay? That seems like... 
circular logic, but all right. Okay. Some people just... Eh. All he heard was that he was too broken for any drug to fix. He was so worthless, even the newest drugs from Koitech didn't do anything. I'll renew your Paxatine prescription, and see about getting you a complimentary drug. We'll figure this out yet, John. Honestly, yeah, a lot of, and so a lot of problem is that, psycho is that people who are very well versed in psychology have a sense of authority to them, but it's not really a very earned one, because psychology is an extremely fuzzy field, so to speak. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but there's a lot of. Bullshit in it. Intentional and otherwise. And stuff is getting over, and long standing theories get overturned all the time. Because, and turn out to be, and more importantly, turn out to be based on nonsense. And that's not, and, and what little, and what there, and that's not even mentally that, like, even when you're, when you, even moving past, like, the big theories and such. Even when you do, even if we assume that they were all accurate, there's a lot of fuzziness to utilizing them. And so it comes a lot to, it comes down to a lot of the, the psychologist in question's own whim, for, maybe whim is the wrong word, but their own best judgment. And sometimes they just fuck up, you know? And oftentimes they just don't know their own mind as well as you do. And you don't have the vocabulary needed to explain it. No one does. I mean, it's better than nothing, usually. On the whole, it's better than nothing, probably. That's, that's the thing. That's a lot of probablys and usuallys. Yeah. Self-reflection. It, you know, it's a lot of times just learning to learning productive self-reflection can do a lot more good. All disassemble. That's I learned that from a lot, from a very young age, and I've been disassembling my own brain ever since. That's why I'm not very. It's why I lack a lot of reflexive disgust responses to things like incest and cannibalism and such. But anyways, enough about me. Now why don't you lie down there, and we can begin our session. Good, get comfortable. Did anything special happen during the day today? No. It was a normal day. The therapy session quickly fell away into a meaningless buzz. For a short time, at least, he didn't feel the emptiness. That... Is she hypnotizing him? I mean, maybe that's just like it. Like hyperbole, but meaningless buzz seems like the opposite of what a therapy session should be. Hmm. Finally, or too soon, it was over. Mrs. Smythe told him he was doing well and sent him on his way. But that's it? You're doing well? Not anything productive to tell him? Not any. Eh, whatever. John slumped back home. The house was empty, like it always was. Ever since his mother left, his father spent all his time working. He did his homework, he ate, he cleaned the dishes, he sat down in front of the TV and stared at it, without turning it on. Somehow he dragged himself into bed and fell asleep. The routine used to be comforting, but now it was starting to erode his sanity. I... I was about to say I know how that feels, but not really. I routines like that have always seemed to drag on me. I've got what I guess you could say I've just got the opposite of habit forming behavior. Anytime I try to build habits it gets harder and harder to do them over and over again. Not easier. 
His mind had to crack eventually. Maybe it was already happening. For a second, he thought he saw a girl out the window. But no, there was nothing. Of course there wasn't. He really was losing it. Why don't you crack open the window and invite her in? <laughs> Maybe that'd help. Cold out there, right? I don't know. Maybe it's not. Another day. Another casual day. He had to face it somehow. It seemed impossible until the moment he finally stumbled into class. School was the usual mindless buzz. There was a job fair announced in third period, as if that meant anything at all. Almost everyone in their school would either go to work for Koi Tech, move, it, or move away, or stay in town and become unemployed. That's... odd. Koi Tech has a st real stranglehold on this town, does it? Hmm. Curious. It's reminding me a, a bit of, uh, what was that game called? Shadowrun? That old tabletop thingamajig where where corporations rule the world, but perhaps it's probably not that bad. And again, who knows? John wondered which one of those would happen to him, but from a distance, as if he was thinking about some person he barely knew. His grades were good enough to get into Koi Tech, but the process was so competitive. No, he didn't have enough energy for that. He couldn't imagine moving away, looking for a job in a strange city. Most mornings, the most he could imagine was surviving the day. But his father wouldn't support him, and his mother would, didn't want him. <laughs> for all the shit my family is, has, it's, at least I can't say the same for that. They, they at least do the bare minimum. Nothing else? Once he graduated, there'd be no way he could stay with either of them. What would happen to him, then? Would he just become homeless? Sit there on the street begging for change until one night he froze to death? Maybe that was all he deserved. Trust me. You deserve far more than the world will ever give you. Both the good and the bad. John, are you alright? Sorry, sir. I'm paying attention, honestly. I didn't ask that. I asked if you were alright. I'm fine. Well, be sure to talk to the counselor, counselor if you're feeling bad, alright? We're lucky to have someone like Mrs. Smythe with us. Alright. Lucky. I'd say. He had to keep it together. He remembered the lessons, but if people were starting to think something was wrong, control was slipping. He had enough time to visit his locker in between periods. There was more Paxatine there. He still had an extra dose left for the day. His locker was on the bottom row, so he always had to bend down and... There was a piece of paper sitting in the middle of the, his locker. Cheer up. That was all it said. Nothing on the backside, no other clues. Probably a girl's handwriting. Who left it? Hey, did you see anyone messing with my locker? Huh? Someone gets stolen? Uh, something gets stolen? There's way too many guys around here for me to notice. It might have been a girl leaving a note. Like, a love note? Keep dreaming, John. Think any girl is gonna love your sorry ass? Wow. Get better friends. Well, I guess it's just a classmate, fair enough. Uh, probably not really a friend. But still, get better friends. <laughs> no, of course no one would, could love him. Right. So you didn't see anyone? Okay, thanks. Hey John, you going to tell me she's a Canadian? I'm heading back to class, see you later. And she's really hot, right? Your imaginary girlfriend sounds amazing. <laughs> Seems to me that you're the one imagining her. John knew he should probably t just take more Paxatine and head, head back to class. Yet, the urge to murder rose. He was still holding on to the paper. 
He wasn't sure why. It could be a prank, one of the guys trying to trick him. If so, it would probably be followed by another fake note, asking him to come out under that stupid confession tree where they'd let him wait and then laugh at him. But just for, for, but for just a moment, he saw the girl watching him. Could it have been her? Well. By the time he got to class, John had a new theory. She felt sorry for him. He must have looked pretty pathetic, and, he, and she recognized his misguided good intentions enough to feel pity. Or, perhaps... Eh. The rest of the school day passed in more of a blur than usual. He might be delusional, but part of John still hoped it wasn't a prank. He headed to his locker, not daring to imagine anything. And there was another paper waiting, waiting there for him. They shouldn't say those things about you. Oh shit. Yeah? It's hard to argue with your assessment. It didn't even look like the same person's handwriting. The first had been beautiful calligraphy. This one was a hurried scrawl. It was all a prank. He no longer had any idea where they were going with this. He had, he'd already been beating himself up over saying the wrong thing, so this was too much for John. He headed straight home to get some sleep before he cracked completely. Perhaps she's just a fellow sufferer. I mean, yeah. The logical thing here is that, well, you know that she that they were saying nasty things about her, probably bullying her just like they do you. Uh, maybe even more so. So maybe she just sees a sees a uh, brother in suffering, so to speak, and despises those people that say such nasty shit about bull the bull to you. I mean, or, or I mean, as you can see, you know, it's easier to get worked up about other people saying nasty shit about uh, about people saying nasty shit about other people. Than it is about yourself. Well, for other, for some people, anyways. Not for me. Uh, so yeah, it's a logical explanation. Of course, that doesn't preclude the idea that she might be a budding school shooter. <laughs> In fact, it makes it more likely. The next day, John went as early as possible and approached his locker anxiously. He wasn't sure what he wanted to find. There was no note this time. But there was a chocolate heart wrapped in foil, set in the exact center of the bottom of the locker. Huh. John stared at it for a while, then slipped it into his pocket and headed to class, even though he knew he'd be far too early. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps I was wrong. Well, maybe not necessarily wrong, but understating things. At the uh, chocolate heart, uh, that's kind of a statement of intent there. Assuming it's from the same person. But, oh, I... There was no way he could eat it. If it was really a prank, he might have slipped a laxative or something inside it. That was the sort of... That was a kind of thing his friends thought was funny. And if it wasn't a prank, he needs to hold it close to his own heart and treasure it forever. But, if it was that girl... It didn't matter now. What mattered was that someone clearly knew his locker combination and could get in whenever they wanted. That could be a real problem. That's a good fucking point. How does she know his locker combination? And maybe that's the wrong question. Who knows what kind of shit she could do? Then again, if she was planning on pulling some nasty shit, she probably wouldn't have made it obvious that she could get in. He knew he should come up with a solution before tomorrow, but what? Hmm. He could uh, do something sensible like telling a teacher or the counselor, try to keep a watch on the locker, place the lock. Or. Or. We could go for some bold action. 
Let's see if we can uh, be become pen pals. John cut a small sheet of paper from one of his work notebooks, wrote thanks on the inside, and set it in his locker. If it was a prank, that ought to throw the pranksters off. And if it was someone who meant well, hopefully they just take it as normal gratitude. Yeah, when people are pulling shit on you, you always want to react in ways that throws them for a loop. And being and, and being grateful is one of the one of the better ones. Kill them with kindness, you know. That's what I always do when people are when people are uh, when people are correcting mistakes online of mine in a really rude and nasty way. I just tell them thanks for the correction <laughs> and move on with my life. You know, they can't hurt you if you just pick uh, if, if you just don't let them. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. They can't hurt you if you don't- if you make yourself someone who isn't hurt by them. <laughs> it's perhaps more accurate. I mean, you could say that if, it's sort of like putting on armor, you know? Technically, you could say, oh, they can't hurt you if you, you don't let them hurt- if you don't let them hurt you, if they're stabbing you. But that- but, but that's not just, you know, not- just not- just somehow magically not letting it hurt you. It's more like putting up precautions to ensure that you won't be hurt. Uh, or something like that, anyways. He headed home and, once his homework was done, quickly fell asleep. The next morning, he thought he spotted someone outside his window, but there was no one there. When he opened his locker the next day, his note was gone. Making an effort to set the mystery of the locker aside, I was like, uh, uh, John went uh, with his friends to the rooftop for, a, for lunch. They spread out on one side, enjoying the sight of the trees below. Midway through the meaningless conversation, John noticed that Lizzie was watching him from the far side of the roof. Her gaze was even more intense than before. Uh, let me do this. So he uncomfortably tried to ignore her and focus on the conversation. Looks like the confession tree is in full bloom, huh? You really believe those stories? True love and all that? It works, man. I've got a buddy who just graduated. He swears he got so much pussy confessing under it. Well, I kept doing it. Then it's not true love, is it? Come on, people have been confessing there for years. You seriously think everyone would confess under the tree if it did nothing? Yes. Nah, man, I think it's a tree of lust. It doesn't guarantee true love, just getting laid. If that was true, way more guys would be into it. But it's mostly girls from what I've seen. <laughs> you underestimate the lustful nature of teenage girls. I'm going to stop talking about that now. <laughs> what do you think, John? I don't know. Ah, uh, don't be that way. You dream of a girl confessing to you under that tree, don't you? Yeah, like that crazy stalker chick. It'd make your heart go a flutter if she confessed, wouldn't it? The tree is magic, man. I'm telling you, even a sad sack like you could get lucky if you confess there. Wow, get better friends. <laughs> Don't be stupid. It's just a tree. Whoa, someone has their pennies in a twist. You're the ones making a big, big deal out of it. <laughs> I'm telling you, everyone goes there to... Only because people like you keep telling these stories. There's nothing magic about the tree. People just believe it's special because everyone else says it is. Girls think the tree is romantic, so they're more likely to agree there. And guys would have to turn someone down in front of an audience. Yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth there, John. <laughs> you're... You're quite the... You're quite the skeptic. Aren't you, John? I like that in a man. <sighs> that's all it is. Yeah, that's actually how a lot of... Uh, a lot of supernatural stuff works. Like... Uh, jinxes and such. You, they're give, they have power, yes. But it's a psychological sort of power. Just like placebos have power. <laughs> you know? 
Shipman, what is wrong with you today? What? You presented your argument, he presented it his. What the, what's the problem? If, if anyone's a problem here, it's you. You're the ones who brought it up. You're the ones who made a big deal of it. He just gave his opinion. He just gave his... No, he just gave his theory. His argument. For it. What's, what's wrong with you? With an attitude like that, you're never going to get a girl. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Haha, <laughs> you insulted the tree. It'll cock block you now. Haha. <laughs> That day, John couldn't get to his therapy appointment fast enough. Mrs. Smythe smiled at him when he came in, but immediately saw he was unhappy. Are you, are you okay, John? Perhaps you should be on a stronger formulation. No. Well, our session should make you feel better. Lie down and get comfortable. Mrs. Smythe, does Paxitine have any visual side effects? I should hope not. T Koitek has the high, uh, highest of standards for every drug it puts out, and Paxidine is nearing its final clinical trial. Excuse me? Pardon me? I'm pretty sure, according to the goddamn FDA, uh, clinical trials are required before you put a drug on the market. Before you put fucking anything like that on the market jesus christ you you're shoving you're shoving half tested drugs on me and say like oh no and you're, you're shoving half tested drugs on me i complain about negative side effects and you're like oh no it's probably just right you know it it's, can't be the drugs fault it's just you know the fucking adaption period it'll be fine fucking hell this stinks of corruption. Jesus Christ. Koitek really does have a stranglehold on this town. Or she's working for them. Or both. That, that's not odd. That's some fucking bullshit. John lay back and stared out the window. Was he really seeing differently? Or was it all in his head? That's the same thing! Where do you- where do you think what you see is? In your head! If you're suffering from- Like, if you're seeing things, you're seeing weird shit that isn't there, then clearly it's all in your head, but why on earth would that mean that it's not real? <laughs> That's certainly a real problem. He stared a long time before he opened his mouth. And just started talking. Everything just feels so... Gray. So you are having vision problems. Not literally gray. It, it, it just... The sky today. I remember when I was younger. I always thought clouds were beautiful. Now it's like... There's just nothing there. Nothing that matters. I look up and I just don't care. That sounds more likely to be a mental issue then. Why don't you get more relaxed and talk about it? Oh, I guess, I guess it could be like a, I guess you might be talking about like a, if it's like an eye issue, but still, most often vi <laughs> visual issues are a problem of the brain. At least weird ones like that, hallucinations and such. Yeah. Taking a deep breath, John did his best. As usual, after talking with Mrs. Smythe for long enough, he felt... Not better, necessarily, but at least not miserable. Their session went by in a flash, and then he had to head home. He shuffled through his routine easily enough, slept fitfully, and then returned to, his, to school barely more rested. Yeah, I... Maybe he's just like... Like, maybe it's not dwelling on the sessions because nothing important happens in them. Although that probably speaks to... Uh, po uh, the... The... Uh, psychologist doing a poor job of it, but maybe I feel like there's something very, very suspect about this Mrs. Smythe. I mean, I I guarantee you the name Paxitine was chosen 
as a reference to per uh, paroxetine, which is a tablet used to treat depression and panic and disorders and social anxiety disorders and stuff like that. It sounds like a kind of suspect name, but it's a pretty reasonable one. Although, although Pax, of course, is Latin for peace, which, well, there's a lot of meanings to peace. You could argue that this sort of apathy of not caring about anything is a, a form of peace. So, yeah, maybe the name is a bit suspicious. Eh, yeah, well, but probably not. Sh uh, yeah. yeah, he shuffled through his routine easily enough, slept fitfully, and then returned to school barely more rested. You need to get a hobby. <laughs> but I can understand why you don't, I can understand why you don't have one. But when he arrived, he found a huge crowd standing and staring. What, at him? What's going on? You know that tree students like to confess under? The words made John shiver, even though he wasn't entirely sure why. He shifted to look through the crowd. Then he saw it. Parts of the tree were still burning, but the rest was char, and ashes coated the ground near it. His throat was dry, as if all the ashes were filling it. Fucking A! What happened? The cops are coming to check it out. But the shop teacher said it looked like arson. Someone covered the tree in gasoline and burned it down. Yeah, trees don't exactly burn easy. See, this is why we need cameras. I've been telling the principal for years, but does he listen to me? No. No one thinks. Yeah, no one thinks. The words slid off his mind, and John turned away without even saying goodbye. Not entirely sure what he was doing, he stumbled straight to his locker. When he opened his locker, he discovered a folded note set in the exact center, like always. He stared at it for a long moment before unfolding it with trembling hands. I didn't like that tree either. <laughs> he stared. He said the words like as if they were a foreign language, wishing he could avoid understanding the conclusion. I didn't like that tree either. It was her. It had to be. None of his friends would be that insane. What would be the point of a prank like that? But what was the point for her? What did she think she'd accomplish? Uh, striking a blow for skepticism throughout the school. Uh, that's probably why. Honestly. <laughs> If she, uh, if she was trying to court me, that'd be a good way to do it. Fuck that tree. And and all the bullshit superstition. Good on her for burning it down. Too bad the rest of the school didn't burn down with it. <laughs> then we'd get out of school for a while. Early break. Should he tell someone? But... This wasn't exactly evident. And did he really want her to get in that much trouble? John decided he was being stupid. Like usual. <laughs> he just needed to talk to her and find out exactly what was going on. Put an end to this. That day, whenever he was in the hallways, he could feel her eyes on him. With every passing moment, he became more sure that she had burned the tree down. Good for her. He wondered if a normal person would be afraid now, but for him, it barely penetrated his numbness. He just wanted to find out what was wrong and put an end to it. It took until after school for him to find his chance. When the teacher handed out assignments, he volunteered to clean the roof. So that she can push us off. <laughs> or we can push her off. John stepped onto the roof and headed to the far side. Ah yes, good old Gary... Now, what was his name? Gary something. Gary... Larson, that's what it was. After a few seconds, he heard the door open again. He ignored it, and instead climbed up to the tank. The upper area was meant to be blocked off. 
but the janitors had stopped putting up the ladder years ago. He turned, and to his shock, she was already coming up the ladder behind him. Reaching the top, she held her hands close to her chest and shuffled her feet demurely. Or shuffled her feet demurely, but there was a spark in her eyes. Ah, It's like she's shyly coming up here to confess to me. Well... I'd accept your confession. Hello, Lizzie. Are you never going to greet me? Hello. Ah, I said it. I said it. Why are you following me? Because I... I le... Could this girl really have burned down the tree? It didn't seem like she had it in her. You'd be surprised. It's always the quiet ones, <laughs> as they say. Were you the one leaving me notes in my locker? Y yes How did you know my combination? I... I watched you. You left me a note. It was almost too much. I took it home and I'll keep it forever and ever and ever. John realized he was in way over his head. Yet his mouth was still moving, asking the inevitable question. As they say, when you're in over your head, keep diving. Why did you burn it down? Because it was a stupid tree! You're so smart, you said it just right! It was awful and stupid and I hate it and hate it and hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate, hate, hate! Fair enough. It was all because of you, John. I could never do what needed to be done before. Now I can. Good for you. She wasn't stable. She wasn't even close. What had he gotten himself into? Ah, but were you saying that perhaps your stability might be what <laughs> kills you? Perhaps you need a bit of instability in your life? I finally found you. You're the only one for me. You're the only one on my AM AM radio. Part of him knew that he should do something. Went away. Call for help. Kiss her. <laughs> Yet. Why? Huh? Why do you care about me? How can you ask that? You're... You're the best person! The only person! Alright, well, I'll say that. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm just another high school boy. No, not even that. I'm worthless. No! No, no, no! Don't say that! It's not true! It's not! I'm broken. My brain doesn't work right, and even the strongest drugs don't make a difference. <laughs> no, that's not true! John is perfect! Perfect! How can you say these things? Yeah. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Or woman, in this case. The way her words flowed together, addressing him directly one moment, and in third person the next, bothered him almost as much as the look in her eyes. Whatever her issue was, it went deep. You're not well, Lizzie. You need help. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, you... You said my name! But do you think she's not well because of the things she's done? Or simply because she's interested in you and that can't possibly be right? Bit of both, probably. But I can't help you. I'm not worth anything to anyone. Just forget about me and find someone else to care about. No! No, I could never! You're the only person who matters! But why? You don't even know me. You don't care about me. I'm just... just part of your problem. Does anyone ever really know anyone else? <laughs> no! It would be better if I was gone. Maybe you'd get better then. That's not true! It's not! That's probably accurate. She'd probably get even much worse if you were gone. Uh, depending on what you mean by gone. I love you, John. I've always loved you. I've watched you. Always. You're so good and kind and perfect and even to a girl like me. You really are too, uh, you really are two of a kind, aren't you? In one respect, at least. 
He could barely even listen to her words. John found himself wandering closer and closer to the side of the building, and she followed him automatically. You're so sad, but you're still kind. I don't know how. You should be broken like me, but you... I can't help you. If you want to help yourself, you need to forget about me and get real help. No! No, don't say that! You're... You're confused, yes. Confused! Poor John is so depressed he's not thinking straight. He doesn't understand how much I love him. Uh... He needs my help. Is help the name of your knife? Because I don't think I need that. <laughs> Certainly not in my spleen. And if you... If you want to take a, uh, a bit of my flesh, that's not so bad, but... Don't be stabbing that into me, please. The world froze for a moment as the knife glinted and all he could do was stare at its edge. You just need someone to take care of you. I'll stop everyone who says unkind things about you. No, no, I should just take you home and keep you there. Safe. Yes, you just need some help. Where the hell has she gotten that knife? Would she actually use it on him? Is she talking about lo locking me in her basement? Because, for one, kinky. But I'm not into that. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> a second later, John realized that it was a foolish thought. That was a foolish thought. The girl, this girl had burned down a tree because he said it was stupid. He had no idea if there were any limits on what she might do. Yeah, that's kind of the problem with these uh, yandere and such. That's why they say don't stick your dick in crazy. It's not that they're vicious and violent and all that. If there were just, if it was just that, well, that would just be strictly superior to a regular woman. It's that they're erratic. You don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to respond. Don't know if they might think that stabbing you in the heart is a, pr it could be proof of their love. I, I could, it's, once you're like this, well, uh, I mean, it's easy to imagine a, a circumstance where that would be the case. And if you have, and if you have a erratic mind, you might, it, it's easy to, it could, it, you might believe yourself to be in a circumstance like that. And if you have, and if you lack inhibitions, well, it can be easy to act on such things without actually thinking them through. The danger I walk the line of every day. And would that really matter? He spent nights lying in bed wishing he'd never been born, wishing he had a way to end it all. <laughs> you can't threaten me. J John? Get away from the edge, it's not safe. He took several steps to the very edge before she could stop him and turn around to face her. The back end of his shoes hung off the edge of the building, nothing between him and a fatal fall. My life matters so much to you? Stop toying around with me. I see what he's doing. <laughs> his life doesn't matter to him. But it sure matters to her, which means he's got a bargaining chip. Clever, John, clever. No, no, you don't understand. What do you even want? To stab me until I'm yours forever? Is that it? Never. John is so good and kind, I would never need to stab him. An interesting phrasing. Not that you would never stab him, you would never need to stab him. That's the danger, isn't it? Not that you're in, not that you're necessarily inclined to do it, but that you can imagine a world where you would do, do it. Please, come away, I'll take good care of you. You can't. Ah, maybe you have good intentions, but you need help. And unless you get it. You can only hurt me. I will, I will, whatever you want, I promise. Just don't hurt yourself. 
It was a lie, of course. She was just saying whatever it took to get him to step away from the edge. It was exactly how he'd imagined it would go. He'd stand at the edge and everyone would say all kinds of lies about how much he mattered to them. Because they'd care about- uh, because they'd care for the first time. Not about him, but about the idea of him. But... The look in her eyes, it couldn't be fa that couldn't be faked. It might be a twisted love, but she loved him utterly. I... She needed help too. Maybe he could be the one to help her. Assuming she didn't stab him. <laughs> and whatever you got to lose. You came from nothing, you returned to nothing. What if you lost? Nothing! What the hell was he living for, anyway? Exactly. I guess. Lizzie, would you make a promise with me? Uh, a promise? I'll step away. I'll talk to you, or let you leave notes in my locker, or whatever it is you want. But you have to listen to me, and get some help. Can you do that? Stop it! Get some help! You promise? You promise you won't leave me if I say yes? I won't leave you, Lizzie. Forever? The answer stuck in his throat, and he hesitated, wondering if he wasn't making a mistake and saying too much. But in the end, he swallowed and nodded. Forever. Ah. Now set the now set down the knife and all. Whoops. God damn it. Damn it, John. As he started to step away, John lost his balance and fell backward. Damn it, you were you were. You were looking so badass for a second there, and then you go and have a prat fall to your death. Suddenly, he was in free fall. Nothing between him and cold pavement. At that moment, Lizzie lunged forward insanely fast and grabbed his wrist. Impossibly, she held him up. Her body was thin, yet somehow she had stopped his fall and held him up with one hand. My god, you're strong. Poor girl. <laughs> Her eyes held a mix of unstable fear and twisted desire. In that moment, he knew with absolute certainty that if he had fallen, she would have thrown herself off after him. Get you a girl who can... who will... Uh, never mind. You can't die, John. You're the only one. The only one. On my AM, AM radio. Yeah, you thought I wasn't gonna do that joke again. Well, it sucks to be you. With that same incredible strength, she pulled him back up to the rooftop. Fortunately, she had left the knife behind when she lunged to catch him. But he was still anxious at being so close to her. John. John almost died. John. I love you. I won't let anything bad happen to you. I'll do bad things to you instead. <laughs> it was clear she was completely unstable. But was she actually dangerous? To him, that is. <laughs> she seemed to care about him more than anything. Or was he just so pathetic that he'd latch onto anyone who showed him the slightest sign of affection? Uh, I mean, there's not much... I wouldn't say that's pathetic. More desperate. Any, any port in a storm, as they say. Worthless. Now, you'll keep your promise, right? Of course, of course! Then tomorrow, we'll go talk to someone. See if we can't get you some medication. Is that okay? That's what John wants, says of course it's okay! Good. Then perhaps... But I want more than that! I want to... Uh, I love you, John! I told you over and over! Don't you love me too? At least she was asking without the knife in her hand, but... Was there a good answer to that question? No, he had to think about it logically. She wanted him to answer yes, but that just might make her worse. The risk of saying no couldn't be ignored either, though. Hmm... Uh... I mean... As much as I could... I mean, I don't really exactly know her, but I mean, from what I've seen of her so far, she seems... ...fantastic. I like the kind of girl that will actually just kill me. So to speak. 
Lizzy, I don't know you very well yet, but despite all this, I think you're a good person. No, 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 I'm awful. John is just being kind. Jeez, we really are too overkind, aren't we? <laughs> and not answering the question. Damn it, she's sharp. I want, I want to get to know you better, Lizzie. Maybe then I could love you. Ah, he said it, he said it. John desperately hoped that wasn't a mistake. He hoped this all wasn't a mistake. This is the greatest plan. But he hadn't been stabbed yet. And after how today had gone, that was good enough for him. Then, I'll see you later, okay? I'll be watching you. But yes, later. You're not going to do anything crazy. No, John loves me. That's all that matters. I mean, define cra anything crazy. <laughs> Her just existing is some probably something crazy, <laughs> if you think about it. We need to both we'll need to get to class, but we'll talk about uh, we'll talk tomorrow, okay? Okay. The rest of the day was even more of a blur than usual. Everyone's voices not even echoing in his head. John could hardly believe what he had just done. It all seemed like a dream now. Had Lizzie pu really pulled a knife on him? Had he really threatened to jump off the school building? Made him wonder if he wasn't the insane one. But no, it had really happened. For better or for worse, he was stuck in this situation. Only when he went, oh, only when he was headed to bed, did John realize that he felt strangely alive, even better than after his therapy sessions. But they do say like a good support network is more, even more important than the therapy. I don't know if this counts as a good support network, but hey, she supported him when he was when he was falling, so good enough for me, or for you at least. Maybe it was the brush with death. Maybe it was just having something to think about other than his pathetic existence. But he felt... almost good. Maybe that meant he was crazy too. But right now, he was just glad to sleep, sleep soundly. Alright. That seems like a good place to stop, alright? Oh yeah, and the uh, main menu has changed. That's con presumably because we've discovered the true nature of her. All right, so that was Crimson Gray. We've certainly gone off to a interesting start. We've got our severely depressed protagonist, our Yandere psy uh, psychotic love interest who's willing to burn down trees for us. I mean, what more could you ask for in a girl? I mean, she's got, I mean, she's got nice pits too. Anything, uh, I mean, people, a lot of people like larger tits, but I think that her size is just right, more or less. <laughs> and yeah. So we've got. So yeah, we've gotten off to an interesting start with a threat, meeting a Yandere who's obsessively in love with us and threatening to kill ourselves if she, in order to get her to get help. This is certainly going to be an interesting game, by the looks of things. I wouldn't have it any other way. So, until next time, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very P. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, and so long, suckers.